Hello. Welcome back to uh, Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to continue our journey into the many interesting pens that are being produced in China and available to us uh, in the global market. So it's a nice uh, ubiquitous frosted plastic case which is kind of familiar lid just pops up and we see an interesting pen we haven't seen before and a real eyedropper. So this is the Leica number two you might call it. It's also called the Moon Man pen. The Moon Man appears to be a brand so maybe Leica and Moon Man have gotten together. So this is the same incredible clear acrylic that we found in the Leica with a different design. Um, still very nice, but unlike the Leica which is 100% clear acrylic, clear feed, here you have a black feed and you have labeling on this red band in the middle. There's no transition between the cap and the barrel which is a, a nice design. Some people find that to be uh, of uh, uh, interesting value. It's just an unscrew cap and as it says in the description on the eBay auction. We'll look at it. It's a one turn. So they have certainly addressed uh, the concerns that users had over the multiple turns, seven or more, to take a cap off that they've now made that one turn. So that's a definite improvement. It's nice to see that the manufacturers of these pens are quickly responding to the input of their customers. This fits well in the hand. This section is, is a good size section. It's an interesting design. It doesn't have your classic concave with a little lip at the end. It just kind of tapers down a little bit at the end. So if you're going to hold it close to the nib, um, it's easy to do. Uh, there's no real step up, but you can feel it a little bit. You don't really feel the threads. So you can really hold this pen anywhere you want. It's extremely light, so it doesn't interfere with... Uh, you're writing from a weight viewpoint. And then it's nice to have a matching eyedropper rather than the syringe that we had before. So uh, this kind of uh, just sits, if you want to get a full fill, then you can pull it out, but then it won't fit into the packaging. But you know, it's just a good design. There's no other information on the package. So uh, that's it. So I think we need to compare it to the original one. So the first thing that, that comes out very obvious is the red band here in the middle. Uh, the shape is differently here. The ends are more squared off and here they're more pointed. It looks like the barrel containing the ink is about the same size, maybe slightly smaller on the Moon Man. But then you have your gold nib versus the silver nib. There is a step up between the cap and the barrel here. We're here, it's, it's uh, flat across. You know, this one takes your seven screws to unturn it, which is a lot, I will admit. So, so this, you know, it's just nice to see that, that they've responded to their users. And if we look at the business end, you'll see the, the difference between the two sections. And that's really where most of the, you know, the changes that you're going to feel as a, as a writer. So this is a much wider section. This is a more classical section here. Uh, both of these are easy to hold, easy to use, easy to write with. So they've really stayed true to that. But I certainly do like this nice simplistic silver nib here versus this ornate gold nib. But as I do me more research, we'll look at different auctions for this pen, I'm certain this pen is now just hitting the marketplace, so getting this video out now for those who are interested in, probably the pen's going to be easy to find. Here we have the uh, Moon Man pen, uh, completely disassembled. There is a minimal amount of parts in this pen, unlike some of the other pens that we uh, have looked at. You got a barrel, you got a cap, both of those are one piece. You have a nib and a feed, and then the section the nib and the feed go into. 
The acrylic is as well machined here as it was in uh, Leica pen. As you can see, they machined a little ledge in there, which fits up against the end of the section to make a nice strong seal. I did forget there is one other piece. This unscrews. You need to have a way of filling up the pen. So that's all the pieces. And the clear acrylic is extremely nice. Again, they did a, a wonderful job. It's uh, unexpected, you know, and this is certainly a unique design. The insert, the assembly piece here, or the nib sleeve, however you want to call it, has your two O-rings, one at the top and one at the bottom. So they would seal up quite well when this pen is used as an eyedropper. This just has a Iridium Point Gold nib and a, and a black feed. The other one had a clear feed, uh, the original one, so that's the differences. But if you look at a new auction, you'll see that they now have a medium silver nib, so uh, that would be more agreeable to me. But we're going to use this one and see how it writes. I don't know whether I misplaced the uh, O-ring at the top of this section, but I took a black one off of a 992. I thought I had some clear ones on my 992s, but we have a black one. I'd much rather have the O-ring there when I reassemble this uh, after I silicone grease everything up. Here's a little size comparison so you can put the Moon Man in perspective between your Caveco Sport, your Delight Alpha, your Moon Man, your 78G, and your Lamy All-Star. Let's take a look at the business ends. So here we are showing sections and nibs. And I think the Leica has the right, sorry, the Moon Man has the right size nib for the size of the pen. It fits in well with this group. The section is the biggest of the group by uh, a couple millimeters, so that's nice for those of you that like that. Safari has its own section, so that's something that you either like or not like, and they're all pretty much all the same. So, you know, as a pocket pen goes, this is up there and that's why I ranked it as high as I did. I think the quality, the size, the functionality, everything is there and number five nibs so you can easily swap them out with anything that you'd like to put in there. Wooding to put in the pen. So I've been on a blue kit recently. Been on um, sometimes permanent kick. So I'm going to go back to one of the original Robert Oster inks, well, the actual the first Robert Oster ink I got, which was Jade, which I fell in love with when I first got it. I'm not going to use the eyedropper. I'm going to use my latest syringe, which holds up to 10 milliliters and has this very, very long blunt end needle end to extract every last bit of ink from almost any bottle you could possibly have. So we're going to do that and we'll do it on camera for those that may not have seen an eyedropper fill before. As I mentioned, I've lubricated the threads between the section and the barrel, you know, so that O-ring and everything else is going to work very, very well. We're going to set that aside. We're going to fill this up with five milliliters in the syringe. And we'll see what it takes to fill up the pen. So the other thing nice about this syringe is you can put it all the way down to the bottom and fill from the bottom up, which is nice. So we've put two milliliters in so far. That's as far as I'm going to fill it. I think that's a good place. And what we have left here is a little more than two milliliters. So we put almost three milliliters into this. So that's an extremely large amount of ink in a pen. We're going to put this in and, and screw it down. As you can see, I could have added more ink to that, but I think that's enough for now. It's going to last me a long time. And then with all eyedroppers, we're going to upend it and let the ink start to saturate the feed. 
it's not going to be as visible as it was in the totally clear pen, but we'll see how that works. You can see it start to work itself down there. So we're going to put this thing upside down off camera for a while and then see how this nib that came with the pen writes. The pen is full of ink. Nice, less that. You can see how it's now started to saturate that feed. Not as visual as it is if that feed is also transparent as well as a section, but it's still pretty indicative. You can see that ink is green. It looks kind of dark, which is interesting. I expected it to be a little lighter, but then Robert Oster inks are very saturated. So the pen fits fine in the hand, unposted. It is extremely light. Here's those weights. For that, I say this section's a little bit larger than average. Yeah, my fingers fit very comfortably. They don't touch much. And the other thing that this pen is also good for is the original one is it posts very securely, doesn't change the balance, and you can easily write with it posted. I really like the way the green color is reflected up into this uh, end of the pen, which is similar to it on the original Leica. So let's put this nib on the paper and see what we got. So right away I think you can hear that this extra fine nib gives you a decent amount of feedback. I mean this is a Fabriano paper which has a little bit of texture to it. It's not as smooth as your Clairefontaine or Rhodia and certainly not as smooth as Tomo River. But I like it because of how it works with most of the inks that I use. So overall this is not my favorite nib. It actually opens up a little bit on the downstrokes, and you can get a, a decent flow. I mean, the other Leica that I have that I've had inked up since the day I got it and has been a consistent writer also has a very good flow to it. Uh, a lot of people like extra fine nibs, so as an extra fine nib, this thing is works as well as any of them or works as the same as any of them. So we're going to rate this pen, and I'm going to go with an eight. So I just think this is extremely well made, extremely functional, and you know the extra fine nib is not something that I would desire. It's It works as you would expect it to work. And we're now going to experiment with some of those other nibs that I showed you. I think the first one we're going to put in here is the 1.1 because I think that'll really change the way that this pen writes and I'd like to see how the feed handles that nib when it's going to put out more ink. Well I've made a prediction on 2018 being the year of the nib. Um, I think it's more officially called the year of the dog but um, you know sometimes you have to stretch a little bit. So speaking of nibs, uh, my friend Bobby, uh, and here's the auction is offering some sub nibs that uh, are number five size so they fit the 992 and they'll fit the Moon Man and the Leica and a bunch of other pens so um, these are really nice they're very affordable I ordered um, a set from him and he included some extra nibs and I'm going to encourage him to keep the set at six instead of four if that's possible so we're starting here with um, a 0.7 which is basically your standard medium now that uh, the Chinese have been branding. Then you go to a 1.1, which has a nice little stub on it. And then a 1.5, which is more typical of a stub. Then we go up to 1.9, which is getting a little bit big, you know, kind of in that range of the uh, music nib that Franklin Christoph offers. And then it jumps to a 2.5 and then a 2.9. I mean, that's... Uh, wide nib. So we're going to put the 1.1 into the Moon Man and, and see how it writes, but 
I just thought I'd give you a preview of what might be coming uh, and available uh, from from China in the pen department. So I've already looked at the soft medium that uh, fits the Wing Sung 698, so which is the pilot style nib. So here's the more generic size 5 nibs that are now coming in a variety of sizes. Here's that 1.1 nib. You know, there's no branding on it, which is fine. You got some scroll work, which I don't really care one way or the other. I would almost prefer the nibs to be clean and plain like it is on the original Leica. As with most stubs, there's no tipping material. You know, it's just uh, ground across there. So we're going to pull the nib out of this Moon Man pen. I got my little gripper here. And it pulls out. I mean, I don't recommend anybody doing this when there's ink in the pen, but for the sake of my viewers who may not have experienced this, so we're going to put that nib aside. Eventually, I'm going to dump it in some water to make it clean. As, as we put on the replacement nib, we'll see how it, it fits well, or it appears to fit well with this section. It might be a little bit big, but we'll see how that works. And with ink, it's slippery. I'm getting ink all over my hands, but just to show you that it can be done. There we go. Uh, this feed is keyed into the section, so it's only going to go in one way. So the nib pushes in well. Seems to fit well. So I'm going to clean up and let's see how this nib writes. Well, it writes very, very well. So I just wanted to give you a close-up of how that nib looks in there. And that silver nib, I certainly think, looks nicer in this pen than the gold nib did. Just my preferences. So let's see how the I think you can see right away that this feed certainly keeps up with this very wet nib. And you'll get natural line variation because it is a stub. And that's the fun part about writing with a stub. And I just wanted to put this jade ink in here because when I first uh, played around with it, I really enjoyed the shading. It doesn't shade as much as I remember it, but then a lot of it has to do with the nib and how the nib lays down ink. I mean, this nib lays down a fairly saturated patch of ink, so it doesn't really matter how your strokes go. But I'm impressed. So the year of the nib is starting to come around, and it's only February of the official year of the dog. So... Uh, and we have a lot to look forward to, and I'm going to enjoy this pen. So I thought we'd just put in perspective the other Leica that I have. And this is the one that takes two turns to come off. Rare. This also has a gold tone nib on it. It's actually two-tone, but this is that Knox nib that is an oblique broad that I had ground and... I really do enjoy how this uh, writes on the paper. This is, pen has been inked up with Robert Oster Frankly Blue for a couple of months. It's about, you know, a third of the way empty. I've never had any burping issues or any issues with the ink flow on this pen. So let's take a look at this nib. You know, certainly not as wide. So if this is the 1.1, this is like a 0.9 maybe. But it also has that variation between horizontal and vertical. And this also lays down a nice amount of ink. And if we compare it up here to the original nib, I think you'll see why I enjoy uh, nibs with some character to it. I mean, there is a 
a place for the extra fine nibs if you're writing on um, paper that's not too good. You don't want a really wet nib, but most of the time I'm writing on very good paper, and most of the time I enjoy a nib that will lay down some decent ink. So hopefully you've enjoyed this quick view of a, of a new pen that's uh, reach, reaching us. And I'm getting out a video early enough that hopefully when you go out on eBay, you can actually find the pen. You know, I couldn't resist trying this 2.9 millimeter nib. This is the widest nib I've ever worked with. So let's see how it lays down some ink. Horizontals work as we expected. And those verticals are wide and wet. I don't think this is a nib that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, you have to have a very specific style of writing, which I don't, but it's interesting to have. I think this feed is, is fine. It's just that, you know, getting that nib on the right angle on the paper is not the easiest thing to do. But I thought you'd like to see what a 2.9 millimeter looks like. Nice wave motion. I mean, you have to write really big to make this thing work. So hopefully you've enjoyed looking at a nib that going to take me a while to learn how to use, but at least it works in the Moon Man pen. So before we end the video, I think I need to ask a question that might come up in the comment section. Which pen do you prefer? So I think that's a very difficult question because these pens have their own value characteristics to them. I think the design of both of them is very good. But if I had to choose between the two of them, I would stick with the original Leica. Partly because I enjoy that squared off design versus that uh, pointed design or, you know, bullet cigar shaped or whatever you want to call it. As much as I think that red ring is not as bad as I originally thought from the photographs, I still like the clean design of the original Leica. You know, I like the frosting here that they did there just to break it up. So they, instead of just having a completely clear pen, whereas in the new one, the Moon Man one, they just used that red band. You know, both of these just really work excellent as eyedroppers. And I really love the way that that ink kind of uh, reflects through the end of the barrel. So, again, it's a close call, but I would choose the original Leica if I was told I could only have one of these two pens. And the fact that they both take a standard number five nib, they have good feeds on them, so um, you can really change the characteristics very easily of the writing by changing the nib. So... Sadly, the original one is very difficult to find if you can find it at all. The Moon Man is, is now, I think, currently probably peaking as far as availability goes. So I would definitely grab it if I couldn't get the original one. Grab it and enjoy the writing. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you have many great writing experiences and get to explore the incredible variety of pens, nibs, and inks, and paper that are out there. So this is the end of this video. Until we meet again, bye. That is one wet writer and one great green. <laughs>